Welcome to uh, Clemson's East Coast campus. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, thanks everybody for coming out. It's a beautiful day in Georgetown. It's like Chamber of Commerce, they like to say. Beautiful day to be here. You all get a chance as you're milling around. Please go out and look back at the house. It's a beautiful view from down on the bay. But uh, welcome to the celebration of what is truly a great day for Clemson University and everybody who loves the coast, our forest, the wildlife, and everything about what we have down here on the coast. Uh, I'm George Askew. Uh, though I now work as Clemson's main campus, I worked here for 28 years as a assistant professor and then came up through the ranks and I was the director here when I left in 2008. It was a great, great opportunity to work on the coast and I loved every minute of it. Jack McKenzie and others like to say that you can take the tiger out of Clemson, but you can never take the Clemson out of a tiger. So I want to tell you that uh, you can take this tiger out of the coast and out of Hobco, but you never take Hobco and Georgetown County and the coast out of this tiger. Take just a minute to introduce uh, some members of Clemson's executive leadership team and other members of our university folks that have come down to be with us today. We have trustee J.J. Britton. Where's J there's J.J. right there. J.J., thank you for being with us today. We have our vice president and chief of staff, Max Allen. Where's Max? He's in the back. Max always hides out in the back, but Max is here. <laughs> Welcome, Max. We have Kyra Lobbins. Where's Kyra? She hide back there with Max. <laughs> Kyra is our. Hey, Kyra. Kyra is the director of the President's Leadership Institute and Strategic Initiatives. And we have Dr. Greg Yarrow. Where's Greg? He's somewhere. Greg is the chairman or the uh, chair of the Forestry and Environmental Conservation Department on the campus. So it's now my honor to call the leader of our, our great university to share his thoughts with us. Jim Clements, I can tell you, is a great supporter and advocate for everything we do in agriculture and natural resources. And I like to say he has been since day one, but it was actually before day one. I'll tell a brief story. When he was first hired at Clemson, uh, he called us on the phone and said, hey, I'm going to start in January. I understand you're having a conference with all the extension people on the main campus as a learning conference. Uh, can I come and speak? It was in December before he even started. And I said, well, I guess we can you know, slide you on the schedule somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So he came in and took off his jacket, rolled up his sleeves, went up and gave a great support for extension. And I can tell you, everywhere he goes, whether he's talking to computer scientists or politicians or whatever, he brags on Clemson University's land grant mission, what we do, which is a large part of what we do down here, natural resources, agriculture, all that we do, never does anything uh, except brag on us. And everything I've ever asked him to do, he's been there to support us and he's a great supporter. So it's our president, Jim Clements. Thank you, Dr. Askew, for those very kind words, and thank you for the great job you do for Clemson. How about a round of applause for George and his leadership? Well, good afternoon. Go Tigers. Thank you all for being here on this absolutely incredible, gorgeous, and beautiful day. It's an honor to be with you as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Bell W. Brook Institute of Coastal Ecology and Forest Science. Is that okay? You getting some echo? Everybody, we're good. Uh, in an article, this is actually really, really cool. If you think about the words that I'm going to say, in an article reflecting on her life, the New York Times once described Miss Bell Wilcox Baruch, and I'm going to quote, as a noted sportswoman who excelled as a horsewoman, a sailor, and a hunter. The Times quoted her father, Mr. Bo uh, Bernard Baruch, as saying she was an extraordinary woman with a great mind and great talent, who was modest and, performed, and preferred to remain in the background. Our father went on to say, she has more medals for her work and her sportsmanship than you could possibly count. She was a, a doer, not just a talker. Clearly, she was also a visionary philanthropist. She left the land that she owned here at Hobcall Barony to be managed and preserved to the benefit of future generations, and we're so thankful for that, and for colleges and universities in the state of South Carolina to be able to use it to further education in research in forestry, wildlife, and environmental conservation. Clemson began our relationship with the Bell W. Baruch Foundation in 1966 and established a former, formal partnership with the foundation in November of 1968. 
I think Ms. Baruch would be incredibly pleased with what we have been able to accomplish in those past 50 years. There are more than 1.3 million acres of surface water in South Carolina and 11 million miles of rivers and streams. These resources not only make our state the most in, uh, incredible and beautiful place in the country, which it is, they're also important to the quality of life and they're important, uh, economic, uh, important to the economic success of all South Carolinians. Hunting, fishing, and wildlife activities add $2.7 billion to the South Carolina economy each year and support nearly 32,000 jobs. The Baruch Institute contributes to, to this vital sector of the state's economy through research on a number of initiatives from wildlife habitats to their feeding habits. The forest industry in South Carolina provides $21 billion annually to the economy and 90,000 jobs. The work that takes place here on areas such as understanding the genetics of certain trees and restoring uh, cypress swamps and bottomland forest truly makes a difference for the or, uh, uh, forest industry as well. In addition to that, the South Carolina Forestry Commission's best management practices for statewide water and soil protection were developed right here. Building on that record of success, the research that is happening today at Baruch covers multiple areas including forest management and water quality, the, economy, uh, the economic value of ecosystem services, the impact of environmental toxins on humans and wildlife, and research that looks at how forests respond to events like hurricanes, fires, and a changing climate. These are just a couple examples of the outstanding work that happens here. I could go on and on and on, but literally then we would be here all day. Dr. Skip Van Bloom, director of the Baruch Institute, tells me that the Institute is one of only two university field stations in the entire country with year-round resident faculty dedicated to forestry. And with the establishment in 2014 of the James C. Kennedy Waterfowl and Wetlands Conservation Center, we are also the headquarters of the first endowed waterfowl conservation center along the 3,000 miles of the Atlantic Flyway stretching from the Canadian Maritimes to the Gulf of Mexico. Currently, the Brook Institute has 10 resident scientists with two more having emeritus status. Baruch faculty are incredibly dedicated to the Institute and to their incredible work. Since 1968, there have been 21 resident scientists here with an incredibly high retention rate. They're also highly productive. The faculty here have more than $8 million in research grants. We're also very proud of the students who work here and study here as interns. And they are great representatives of the entire student body at Clemson. By the way, during the past five years, 33% of Baruch's undergraduate interns were minority students and 50% were women. None of these successes would have been possible without the collaboration and partnership for many of you who are here today. And I want to personally thank you on behalf of the entire institution. I especially want to thank the Baruch Foundation, led by Chairman Ben Ziegler, the Wallace F. Pate <coughs> Foundation for Environmental Research and Education, and the members of the Pate family, led by Lucille Pate, and the Yaki Foundations, represented here today uh, by President and Trustee Jim Healy, and by Jamie Dozier of the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, who are the managers of the Tom Yaki Wildlife Center. Jamie, by the way, is a 1994 graduate of Clemson's Wildlife and Fisheries Biology Program. I also want to thank the Nemours Wildlife Foundation, led by President and CEO Ernie Wiggers, another fine Clemson graduate, class of 1975, in economic uh, biology. Please join me in thanking these great friends and partners. I tell you, if you really think about it, we're so blessed. There are so many people that step up to help us time and time again. We can't do the important work we do without your help, so I'm personally very thankful. I also want to thank everyone who has made gifts through the Pate Partners Program. 
to enable the important work that is done here. If you participate in the Pate Partners Program, would you please raise your hand and accept our thanks. Without this guidance, participation, and support over the years, we would not be here celebrating 50 years of incredible success and preparing for what I believe will be even more incredible future. To ensure the Institute's continuing set success, we need your help. We need your help. The bottom line is we need your help. Our greatest needs are more laboratory space, student housing, and funding more internships, research, and faculty support. Strengthening the resources and activities here aligns perfectly with the goals and objectives of the Clemson Forward Plan, the university's strategic plan designed to ensure that Clemson and our graduates are prepared for whatever comes next in an increasingly diverse, connected, and global society. To help us envision and create a master plan for the Institute's growth, we turn to a fantastic team of brilliant students and our faculty in the School of Architecture. At this time, I'm going to ask Skip to tell us about that plan and the vision that it pre uh, represents. Will you please help me welcome Skip to the podium? Thank you, President Clements, and, and thanks again for your support uh, of our program down here and, and being a good cheerleader for, for Clemson statewide. I see so many familiar faces in this room, and, and I've only been here in the state for a little over four years, and, and now it, it, it doesn't seem like saying welcome is enough. It should be more like welcome home. Welcome home to Hobkaw and welcome home to the Baruch Institute. I'm very excited to tell you about the plan that our partners in the Clemson School of Architecture have put together to help us develop our uh, facilities here. As we plan for the next 50 years, some things are clear. The low country is changing, and we will change to keep up. Clemson has already invested in our program. In the last five years, Clemson has doubled the faculty at the Baruch Institute. Our faculty now advise 14 graduate students. A few are here in, in residence, and, and some are in the, in the crowd right now. So um, will you guys raise your hand, our grad students? Yep. Um, some are here in residence, some are on campus taking classes, and others are working with our partners um, in the ACE Basin. We have added new lines of research in natural science, natural resource economics, and forest atmosphere interactions in the last couple years, and we've also reinvigorated our wildlife biology program. We maintain research in hydrology, water quality, forest ecology, forest dynamics, and the effects of hurricanes on forests and aquatic systems, as Dr. Clemens mentioned. Our faculty are bursting at the seams with new ideas and projects, and our institute is bursting at the seams in its space. The investment in human capital we hope to match with investment in infrastructure. We've constructed perhaps the most cohesive academic unit anywhere, not just at Clemson, but, but I think maybe anywhere. We all share pretty well, but different lines of research require different types of lab space, and, and what's appropriate in one space may be detrimental to other types of research in the same space. Our goal is to have one and a half graduate students per scientist in residence. That would be 18 graduate students here in residence at, at Hobcaw. I have room for six. Um, and they're all in the attic uh, <laughs> next door. <laughs> they love that space. Um, we currently turn away about 90% of the undergrads who apply for summer internships with us, um, in part because of lack of housing. Next year, we also will expand our spring semester graduate course offerings from one class to either three or four, helping to support the graduate training efforts of our colleagues on campus and expanding the field station experience to more students. So, faced with a, a challenge in infrastructure, we turn to another part of the Clemson family, the School of Architecture. We asked them if we could provide an opportunity for their students to get practical, hands-on experience just as we provide for our, sci our students in, in sciences. So I'm happy to present to you today their solutions for the future needs in research support and housing. You can begin to see some of that here. Beginning one year ago last week, we partnered with the architecture program to support three studio pro projects with help from the Pate Foundation. Our fo we focused on research support, 
one focused on research support, one focused on housing, and one on a master plan and landscape design. The integration of all three aspects at the outset has been a strength of the project. The architecture students made five trips to Hobkaw. They met with our faculty, staff, and students. They met with Fish and Wildlife Service personnel to understand the limitations of building in a habitat for the endangered red cockaded woodpecker. They met with the Baruch Foundation to understand the limitations in building design that comes with fitting into a historic property. They listened to all types of complaints and desires. <laughs> <laughs> the key is that they listened and, uh, and they developed great solutions which are on, on display here today. Their solutions include a new 7,000 square foot research support building cleverly tucked between our existing lab and headquarters. The building has a number of exciting features that help us to continue to set the example for sustainable resource management, including solar power, bird safe window screens, rainwater collection, and landscape design that integrates fire breaks to protect our facilities. The solutions also included additional housing, which will facilitate class field trips, summer intern programs, and longer term stays for visiting graduate students, postdocs, and professors. Particularly exciting is that the design solutions use wood. Forest science is part of the Institute's name. What better way to walk the walk than to build with wood? The lab would be built with cross laminated timbers, which add strength, absorb wind forces, and reduce construction time. The housing designs use the Simply system developed at Clemson. I don't really know exactly how to explain all that. <laughs> So uh, our architecture students and our architecture faculty, and you guys should raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. Uh, <laughs> Y'all can ask them about that afterward. <clears throat> when, the, when the Pate Foundation was started, one of its goals was to support student experiences here at the Clemson Baruch Institute. Specifically, we do that through the Pate Partners Program, which helps fund student intern stipends. Some of you here today have supported that program in the past and we hope you will continue to do so. Five years ago, we had two undergraduate interns. In 2014, we completed the Harris Cottage and in the past two summers, we've averaged nearly 12 interns a year. So we also have some of our um, former summer interns here. Um, so will you guys raise your hands? So Trey and Amanda and I think there are a couple others around too. And they can, they can tell you all about the experience of, of uh, the cottage and summer internships here. With your help, we, continue, we can continue to grow, and more importantly, we, have, we can have an even greater impact on the students that we teach, the community in which we live, and the beautiful natural resources that we all love and benefit from so much here in the Low Country. Um, in order to achieve our aggressive goals for the next 50 years, we simply must have your support. The Clemson Institute started in this very building. It was the office, it was the lab, it was the grad student office in the basement. Um, we have, Clemson over the years has helped us move forward and you all have helped us move forward and in the next 50 years we, we hope to continue to, to move forward. So with this, um, thank you very much and I'll turn it back over to President Clemens. Thank you, Skip. I'm thrilled that you joined us four years ago. We appreciate your leadership here and look to, uh, forward to many, many more uh, years of that. Um, I was here a couple of years ago when we opened that cottage. And unlike to, yeah, I was going to say, today it's gorgeous and beautiful. Any, were, were any of you here two years ago? It was raining like crazy, wasn't it? But it was still a great day. And it was a, 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 a great day for us and for so many reasons. This fits our land-grant mission so well. I'm so proud of what we have here and what we do together. Um, it's all about creating a vision for the future, right? So what is, what is that future gonna look like? And I, I want you to hear directly from one of our students uh, 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 this afternoon. I'm gonna ask in a minute Chris Sandcooler, who is a graduate student in architecture, to give us his perspective on this project and to introduce the other members of his team. Then I hope that you'll take a minute and walk around, look at the displays that the students have provided, ask them questions, they are brilliant, uh, they're excited about their work. Uh, let them share that vision uh, with you, if you would. And to uh, all our students, I want to say thank you to you for your important hard work. I'm really proud of you. 
uh, and I'm so pleased that you are at Clemson. I look forward to giving all of you your degrees uh, in the future. Uh, Chris, why don't you come on up and uh, share your thoughts with us. Would you please help me welcome Chris to the podium, please? Well, thank you, President Clemens. To introduce myself, my name is Chris Sandcooler. I am originally from Lidditz, Pennsylvania. I came to Clemson in 2012 to study architecture. I earned my undergraduate degree in 2016, progressed straight into graduate school, and finally, I will have my uh, Master's of Architecture in this upcoming May. Right. Earning two degrees at Clemson has afforded me not only a great education, but a variety of exceptional experiences outside of the classroom. At Clemson, we speak about the something in these hills, but in my experiences, these special qualities which make our university so unique extend far beyond our campus borders. I've had the privilege of many off-campus experiences, from studying at the Daniel Center Villa in Genoa, Italy, to touring CUI car in Greenville, and now to learning about experiencing and working with the Baruch Institute of Coastal Ecology and Forest Science at the Hopkall Barony. This past semester, I was one of 37 students who worked on a unique design project based here at Hopkall. Three of us are here today, as I'm joined by Chelsea Anderson, <laughs> and Allison Chan. <laughs> Together, we are a mix of graduate and senior level undergraduate students from the disciplines of architecture and landscape architecture. We were asked to explore facilities and site design needs that would help the Baruch Institute grow over the next 50 years. As a first time visitor here back in August, my most visceral memory was the first time we drove down Hopcall Road into the forest and towards the water. To me, it was as if we were a van on a safari and we were the crew for planet Earth ready to explore <laughs> and document our surroundings. Uh, clearly, uh, me and my classmates spent a little too much time in studio, I think, and maybe need to get outside a little more often. <laughs> on that drive, my first stop was with Tom O'Halloran, uh, one of the faculty here, as he introduced us his work on the role of forest in the climate system. I got to see how the rising saltwater marshes were affecting the nearby cypress and bordering pine forests. On that drive, I also had the opportunity to learn about the rich history of the Baruch Institute at the homes of Bernard and Bel Baruch, as well as at the Friendfield Village. The combination of the rich history of the ecosystems that we experienced, as well as the historical landmarks, made it clear to me that Clemson's presence here is not only vital for the, for the school's research endeavors, but is also important to the history and development of the Low Country, as well as the state of South Carolina. From an architecture student's perspective, this was easily my most unique and professionally challenging studio because for the first time we had an active and very engaged client who had real life needs and preferences. Every student in the design studio had the opportunity to visit the site and with Biceps user groups multiple times, giving us really an unparalleled insight into not only what our client needed, but also into our surrounding aesthetics. This is truly a uh, unique experience for uh, undergraduate and graduate architecture students. To Skip Van Bloom and those who work at the Baruch Institute, thank you for your time and efforts uh, this past semester. To those of you who support the Baruch Institute with your time, contribution, and insight, thank you very much. With that in mind, I know we are very excited to present to everyone our design visions for the new research support building, the research housing, and the master plan and site design that tie it all together. So now we invite everyone to come uh, up to the front of the room here, uh, look at the presentation boards, and ask us any questions uh, we may have. And thank you for your time. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Hopcaw Barony on a beautiful day. Welcome to the celebration of what is truly a great day for Clemson University, certainly the coast in Georgetown County, the Brook Foundation, the Pate Foundation, everybody else. We're happy to have everybody here. It's been 50 wonderful years. Uh, I'm George Askew. I had the privilege of spending 28 of those years here during my formative years, <laughs> such as they were. And, uh, I told the group down a little while ago that uh, Jack McKenzie likes to say that uh, you can take the tiger out of Clemson, you can't take Clemson out of the tiger, well you can, you can take me out of Low Country and out of Hobco, but you can't take it out of me. I carry a piece of this with me everywhere I go. It was a very important part of my life, watching this place come up from really, really living in the Hobco house down there in the brick house and uh, going through Hurricane Hugo and recovering from that and seeing the wonderful relationship we've had with the folks at Debidu next door and all the people on the coast, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience and it's great to be here for the 50th, 50th year here. So uh, I have a few people I'd like to introduce that are here with us from Clemson University. And first I'll introduce Mr. Hank Owen and his wife Kay. Hank is the chairman of our board of visual. Help me welcome Hank here today.
We also have Mr. Max Allen, our Chief of Staff and our Executive Vice President. Max, welcome here. Thank you very much. And with Max, we have Kyra, uh, excuse me, Kyra Lobbins, who is our Director of the President's Leadership Institute and also her Director of our me, Strategic Initiatives. Kyra, welcome. And somewhere hiding in the back, I think we have Dr. Greg Yarrow. Where's Greg? Here he is. He's our uh, Chair of our Forestry Environmental Conservation Department in Kansas. So I say we're happy to have everybody here today, and we're very especially happy to have President Clements with us here today. President Clements is a wonderful president at Clemson. He does a wonderful job. I tell everybody that he's a big supporter of everything we do in natural resources, and he really, truly is. He is the consummate land-grant university president, in my opinion. He represents everything the land-grant university is about in all of his aspects. Great, great supporter of extension, great supporter of, of this uh, institution down here. And so it's my pleasure to introduce our president, Jim Clements. Well, thank you, thank you, Dr. Askew. Uh, thank you for the very kind words, and thank you for the great job you do for Clemson University. Would you please help me thank George for the great job he's done? Well, good afternoon, and go Tigers! And thank you. All right, there we go. Uh, thank you all for being here on this absolutely beautiful and gorgeous day for this celebration. It's an honor to be with you as we kick off the 50th anniversary celebration of the Bell W. Baruch Institute for Coastal Ecology and Forest Science. The Institute is an incredible example of how an incredible act of visionary philanthropy long ago has led to partnerships and collaborations that have literally changed people's lives in a very positive way and improved the quality of life in our state for many generations. That is also very much the story of Thomas Green Clemson and Clemson University which is why we are proud that through the Baruch Institute, Clemson is a part of Hobcob, and Hobcob is a part of Clemson. Miss Bell W. Baruch was a remarkable woman. She was known for her passion for the outdoors and for her skill in activities ranging from hunting to sailing to horseback riding. Clearly, she was also a visionary philanthropist. She left the land that she owned here at Hobcob uh, Barony to be managed and preserved to benefit future generations, and we are so thankful that she did that. To be used by colleges and universities in the great state of South Carolina to be able to further education and research in forestry, wildlife, and environmental conservation. We have a brief video that we would like to share with you in which some of the folks who helped to bring Mrs. Baruch's vision to life talk about the Institute's history, the impact, and the future. What we call today the Baruch Institute of Coastal Ecology and Forest Science started in 1968 as the Baruch Institute of Forestry and Marine Sciences. And it was set up between Clemson and the Baruch Foundation which itself was set up after Bell Baruch passed away in 1964. The original uh, document that established the relationship was signed on November 14th of 1968. We formed what was called a tripartite agreement between the Baruch Foundation, the University of South Carolina, and Clemson University, and each one had a very specific role. It was a very nice arrangement. The Baruch Foundation was responsible for the property. The University of South Carolina has a Marine Institute, and then Clemson University was responsible for the upland work, forestry, wildlife, life and the forest ecology work. The institute was directed through Clemson, from Clemson, uh, for a few years and then they began hiring full-time resident faculty in 1973. There are very few research stations that have full-time year-round faculty that are devoted to ecology and natural resource management. Clemson has invested in 10 full-time, 12-month scientists. For me, one of the things that was so attractive was the unique combination of resources, both in terms of people and infrastructure, meaning the, the labs and the office building, and the place, the, the geographic place. We're really at the front lines of change here, and so there's a ton of really good, important science that we can do right on the property, right here, and then obviously 
in the, in the larger region. We do a lot of research here at Hobcall Barony, but a lot of our research is done specifically on private landowners' property, and we're looking at information on how to work with private landowners to work further out from there. We do hold workshops here, but we also work with the public and do trainings throughout the state. Having a full-time year-round faculty here is a pretty unusual thing. That allows us to do a lot of long-term research that we wouldn't be able to do without full-time faculty here, and it allows us to support a lot of students. The, the opportunity for students here has really changed dramatically since I first came. In 1990, when I first came, we were all in uh, the one small building behind us and it was just enough room for the faculty and the technicians that we had and really no place for students. But beginning in 1980, I went to Baruch and started uh, work for eight months in the field. At that time, the facilities were not near the same as they are today. Uh, there was no big research building out close to the highway. We all worked in the Hopka House. My office was in the dingy basement of Hopkaw House and the laboratory facilities were in one of the outbuildings right around the house. It's changed uh, drastically uh, since 1990. Technology has really opened up the opportunity for us to have a smart classroom. And now we have our cottage so we can house students here for short-term stays. We went from a, working in the old mansion years ago when I first went down there to having a very small building of our own, to having a very nice building of our own. So we've, we've grown along with that and I think along and along being on that piece of property that we knew was going to be there to use without great changes for a long, long period of time allowed us to ground our work and really establish a, a base of operations for the whole coastal plain. I think the, the students who are going to go there now and into the future are very fortunate. The resources and facilities that we have there are now absolutely top notch. Another opportunity that we have both for research and students is in the last few years the Institute's been able to forge new partnerships. Um, a long-term partnership with the Yaki Foundation has, has become a little more um, formal. Baruch Institute is a great partner for this type of research, especially with things like sea level rise, climate change, urban sprawl, uh, affecting all of our coastal properties. We feel like it's a great opportunity to partner with an institution that has fantastic staff locally to look at a lot of these problems as we move forward. In addition to that is with the Nemours Foundation down in the Ace Basin south of Charleston. I told Skip that I needed telemetry experience. He made a few phone calls and through that I actually you know, got to stay um, at Nemours Wildlife Foundation. I gained a whole other understanding um, of our natural ecosystem, especially the coastal species and the research that goes on there. My experience at Baruch has fostered this connection with Nemours Wildlife Foundation. After I graduated, I was looking for work. I actually got hired on as an intern immediately after graduation, and it just um, led me to start asking questions of my own. And Nemours actually funds my graduate studies. I have Brooke to thank for all of that. Both the Yaki Foundation partnership and the partnership with the Nemours Foundation allows us to support more students as well. We also introduced the James C. Kennedy Waterfowl and Wetlands Conservation Center. Mr. Kennedy endowed a research program for us so that we could address particular questions that we have in waterfowl management here in the low country. So that's been an example of uh, a private gift that's had a, a large effect. It's allowed us to build that partnership with the Nemours Foundation. It's provided funding for graduate research and also undergraduate internships and undergraduate research. We count on that kind of support to keep undergraduate programs and to keep you know, new infrastructure moving. With continued support, we'd like to be able to grow and expand the, the undergraduate research program, and we'd like to be able to expand the infrastructure so that we've got the facilities that we need to expand the research program into areas that, into new areas that are important here in the Low Country. I know that Brook is capable of growth inside. Um, they've grown even just between the two years that I was there. If given the, the proper you know, funding and opportunity, it'll be unmatched with what they can actually, actually do. I'm very jealous. I wish I was here working with you and maybe when I go back to faculty full time, I'll come on down and hang out with you. Um, you're living the land grant mission. 
you are doing it right here in a, in a first class way and I'm very thankful for you. Um, if you're one of our students here working in any way, shape or form, would you please stand or raise your hand so we can recognize you? Come on, I know we got some architecture students too. You know how lucky you are to be a part of this special place. I think Ms. Baruch would be uh, very pleased uh, with what we have been able to accomplish over the last 50 years. Wouldn't you agree with me? It's incredible. And you know what? The best is yet to come. I really believe the best really is yet to come. There are more than 1.3 million acres of surface water in South Carolina and 11,000 miles of river, rivers and streams. These resources, as you know, make our state the most beautiful state in the entire country. And they're also important to the quality of life in so many ways and a very important economic resource for us as well, for everyone in the state. Hunting, fishing, and wildlife activities add $2.7 billion to the economy in this state every year and support nearly 32,000 jobs. The Baruch Institute contributes to this vital sector of the state's economy through research on a number of initiatives ranging from wildlife habitats to their feeding habits. The forestry industry in South Carolina provides $21 billion annually to the economy and about 90,000 jobs. The work that takes place here at Baruch on areas such as understanding the genetics of certain trees and restoring cypress swamps and bottomland forest truly is making a difference for the uh, uh, forestry industry in this state and beyond. In addition, the South Carolina Forestry Commission's best practices, best management practices for statewide water and uh, soil protection were developed right here. Building on that record of success, the research performed today at Baruch covers many important topics, including forest management and water quality, the economic value of ecosystem services, and the impact of environmental toxins on humans and wildlife, and research that looks at how forest responds to events like hurricanes, fires, and a changing climate. These are just a few examples of the outstanding work that is happening here. I literally could go on and on. Many of you in this room know of the many other important initiatives that are taking place. I'm really pleased with the leadership here. We have a great guy and Dr. Skip Van Bloom, and those of you know him, would you please help me thank him for his leadership? <laughs> Four years in, Skip, we expect a lot more, all right? I want you to keep it up. Um, Skip does tell me that the Institute here is one of only two university field stations in the entire country with year-round resident faculty dedicated to forestry, and I'm very thankful that we have that. And the establishment, uh, Skip, as you noted in the video in 2014, we're very thankful for uh, James uh, Kennedy um, uh, for the Waterfowl and Wetlands Conservation Center. Um, that's headquartered here. Currently, the Baruch Institute has 10 resident scientists and two more having emeritus status. Um, they're incredibly dedicated as I look around this room, as you know, to this institute and the important mission that is being done here. Since 1968, there have been 21 resident scientists here with an incredibly high retention rate. When people come, like George, they don't want to leave. And when they leave, they take it with them. Uh, and it will always be there. Uh, faculty here are also uh, so very highly productive. As I'm looking around the room, I know there are many of you that have incredible grants, and we're very thankful for the work you do. The current faculty have more than $8 million in research grants. Uh, those of us in our faculty roles know that's very competitive and very hard to achieve. We're also very proud of the work that takes place by the students here who study as interns. They're great representatives of the student body, and I'm pleased uh, that over the last couple of years, 33% of the undergraduate interns here were minority students and 50% were women. None of the successes that I've mentioned, and I could go on and on, none of those successes would be possible without our partners who are in this room. It takes partnership and collaboration. That's how you make a difference in the world, and I'm thankful for those of you who have reached out to help. I especially want to thank the Baruch Foundation, led by, led by Chairman Ben Ziegler, the Wallace F. Pate Foundation for Environmental Research and Education, and the members of the Pate uh, family, uh, led by Miss uh, Lucille Pate, as well as the Yaki Foundations represented here today by the President and Trustee Jim Healy uh, and Jamie Doz Dozier, 
of the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, who are the managers for the Tom uh, Yaki uh, Wildlife Center. Uh, Jamie, by the way, is a 1994 graduate of Clemson's Wildlife and Fisheries Biology Program. I also want to point out from the Nemours Wildlife Foundation, led by President and CEO uh, Ernie Wiggers, another very fine Clemson graduate of the class of 1975, uh, and uh, board member Mike McShane are here. Would you please help me thank all of these very fine members? <laughs> Trust me, it really does take partners uh, to get this work accomplished. We can't do it alone, and we're thankful so much for that support. I also want to thank everyone who has made gifts through the PATE Partners Program to enable the important work that is done here. If you participate in the PATE Partners Program, would you please raise your hand and accept our thanks? Without this guidance and participation and support over the years, we wouldn't be here celebrating an incredible 50 years of success and preparing for an even better future that will come. We know that we can count on you for your continued support to ensure this institute's future. And let me just say, we need your help. We're gonna need your help moving forward. We've got a lot of big ideas and I know you have a lot of big ideas moving forward. To help us envision and to create a master plan for the institute's growth, we turn to a fantastic team of brilliant students and faculty in our School of Architecture. They did an incredible job. I know that we, you will enjoy meeting them and talking with them later this afternoon. I'm sure they would be proud to share with you some of the work that they have done. Um, and you saw uh, Skip in the video. I'll talk a little bit. By the way, you did a great job in the video. Oh, yeah. You did a great job. Uh, but now he is here in person to share more of his vision for the future. Would you please help me welcome Skip to the podium? I think I prefer to be here in person. Uh, <laughs> thank you, President Clements, and thanks for your leadership and your energy and your dyna dynamism and representing Clemson and supporting our program here. On, on behalf of all of us here at the Baruch Institute, I want to say welcome and thank you to everybody here for joining us today um, to help us kick off our Institute's golden anniversary year. You, you have a, a, a little flyer on all your chairs that, that talks about some of the milestones that we've achieved over the years. And, uh, and you can see it's been, it's been 50 years of, of, of achieving Bell Baruch's vision and the vision of, of the first Clemson scientists here and then, and then moving forward. Uh, step by step over the last 50 years. I want to talk about field stations because the Institute is a, is a, is a type of a field station. There are a number of them across the United States and field stations are special places. Their very nature encourages students and faculty that are here to live and breathe science for an extended period of time. They say the best way to learn a language is to immerse yourself completely in it. Similarly, field stations allow us to immerse ourselves completely in science and research with few distractions. As a graduate student, uh, I had the opportunity to live at two different field stations, and I'm absolutely certain that those experiences that I had as a grad student made me a better scientist and a better person. I learned the importance of soils and forestry. I learned how to survive the tedium of processing soil samples <laughs> to, de to determine why those soils are important. <clears throat> um, Immersed in a community of scientists, I learned how to evaluate data scientifically and how to explore alternative explanations for things we could not explain. To this day, I'm still in touch with most of the other students who were at the field stations while I was there. Through the magic of the field station experience, I even married one of my student colleagues. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. <clears throat> Where is she? There she is. Oh, she's blushing. Uh, so you see, it's not all science 24-7. <laughs> well, the, the experience is more than just science. We draw students to the institute who I think would be, in, in many cases, unlikely to interact elsewhere. Um, they come from different majors and they come from different backgrounds. So our students, um, and I wholeheartedly believe that the opportunity of getting to know people from different uh, who walk different paths and are, have different perspectives is at least as valuable as the scientific training we provide. Particularly when the public discussion is coarse uh, and divisive. So we ask our students to share a roof for 15 weeks. It's not always easy, but um, they always rise to the challenge. 
It's a tiger spirit here with some Hobka seasoning. It's an immense privilege for me to be able to help provide a similar experience for our graduate and undergraduate students at the Clemson Baruch Institute that I had when I was a, when I was a graduate student. Our students have accomplished many things. Um, some highlights include designing more resilient canals and ditches for Horry County, revising forest management plans for the Clemson Pate Forest, constructing rainwater retention ponds to use in the extension programs, tracking eastern diamondback rattlesnakes and fox squirrels um, after they were reintroduced to new habitats. Everybody wants to track rattlesnakes. <laughs> each project benefits from having the fresh perspective and energy of students, and each project benefits provides a benefit to those living in and managing our low country environment. Each project also gives students practical experience from which they can leap into their careers after Clemson. And some of those students, some of our former interns are here uh, today, and most of them are sitting over in this corner. So uh, Trey and Logan can, and Sean and Luke and Amanda, you guys can wave your hands and, and please talk to our student, and Tyler back here, please talk to uh, introduce yourselves and, and chat with our former and present students um, when you get a chance. I have no doubt that the field station experience also has lent a hand in, in developing leaderships, leadership skills that we see today in our provost, Dr. Jones. As he mentioned, he was a graduate student here, and I think the field station experience really has a long-lasting effect. Um, our faculty are bursting at the seams with new ideas and projects, and they do great work to benefit the Low Country, the state, and internationally. After the program, I invite you to interact with our faculty um, along the hall to see more about what we do. I could stand here for hours and tell you about every single project we do, but you'd soon, soon fall asleep. So uh, I think it's much, much better if you interact with our faculty um, up and down after, with, uh, you know, with um, some hors d'oeuvres and, and some snacks along the way. Since the student experience is central to what we do here, it made sense to involve students in helping to shape the plan for the next 50 years. Along with ideas, our institute is bursting at the seams in terms of space. So we would not be able to provide the same student experiences through the future without a significant investment in our infrastructure. So faced with that infrastructure challenge, we turn to another part of the Clemson family, the School of Architecture. We asked them if we could provide an opportunity for their students to get practical hands-on experience, just as we provide our students in sciences. Beginning early last summer, uh, the architecture students began to visit Hobcaw Barony and in, in support of three student studio projects. One focused on research support, one on housing, and one on the master plan and landscape design. The integration of all three aspects from the outset was a strength of the project. The students made five trips to Hobcaw to meet with our faculty, staff, students, and partners. They listened to all kinds of complaints and desires, and they developed great solutions which are on display today. And they have put together a brief video to tell us about their work. With support from Clemson Public Service and Agriculture and the Wallace F. Pate Foundation, Clemson School of Architecture has collaborated with the Baruch Institute to explore facilities needs and site improvements that will propel the Institute into its next 50 years of research, education, and outreach. Working closely with BICEF's faculty, staff, and students, we have produced a campus master plan as well as specific proposals for a new research support building and new researcher housing. Upon entering the property from Highway 17, the BICEF's housing is located just past the Hawkaw Discovery Center. Continuing further to the southeast, you will find the Research and Education Campus. The BICEF's Research and Education Campus is set in a sensitive landscape where controlled burns are regular in the forest. Within this setting, the new research support facility is proposed for the area between the BICEF's administration building and the existing lab. This location was chosen in order to keep the campus tight, protect from fires, preserve the habitat of the endangered red cockaded woodpecker, and allow for easy access between buildings. The site between the two buildings is at a low elevation point and is subject to flooding. The current site lacks a common storage area for boats and outdoor gear. It also lacks adequate access and efficiency for dirty work functions such as unloading and storing samples from the field. 
To combat these challenges, a backup house road was devised to allow easy access for BICEF scientists and their equipment. This road doubles as a fire barrier. Next, the proposed research support facility is lifted up above the flood elevation, leaving only the functions below that can withstand flooding without damage. At the low elevation point, a bioswale will be created with overflow to the wetland at the rear of the buildings. A new gear shed, shown here on the left, will consolidate the loose storage that currently exists. All buildings are knit together with a boardwalk for easy access and connectivity across the campus. To meet the research needs of current and future BICEFS personnel, we are proposing a new laboratory facility of approximately 7,000 square feet and a remodel of the existing lab building. The lower level of the new building contains utilitarian functions, whereas the upper level contains the controlled laboratories which are brightly daylit and offer outstanding views of this remarkable setting. Here you see the new research support building in the middle. To the left is the existing lab building whose renovations would include converting the lab spaces into work areas for graduate students and interns. The ground floor of the proposed new building offers dirty work activities such as carpentry, welding, and soil grinding, as well as locker and laundry rooms. On the second level, the lab spaces are arranged linearly for efficient operation. The narrow footprint also allows for natural daylighting and natural ventilation where desired. Lab technician offices are included in this floor as well as kitchen and break room. The roof orientation provides ideal sun exposure for roof mounted solar panels and solar collectors. A planted area of the roof could support experimentation and hands-on education. The structure of the new research building utilizes advanced timber building systems for the upper volumes and treated steel columns at the base to harmonize with the tree line and resist water corrosion. The timber building strategy dovetails with BICEF's commitment to sustainable forestry and connects with the research of Clemson's Wood Utilization and Design Institute, all while providing a positive example of low carbon construction in the state of South Carolina. Dedicated to honoring the beauty and diversity of South Carolina's coastal landscapes, the researchers at BICEFS will feel a profound connection to their natural surroundings through spaces that are at home at the forest edge and respect the native wildlife. Turning our attention to the new researcher housing, the goal is to meet the needs of a variety of potential BICEFS users, ranging from temporary visitors to summer interns to longer term students and research scientists. The new house, depicted here in the middle, sits between the Hobcaw Discovery Center and Clemson's existing Harris Cottage. This site has easy access from Highway 17 and is a natural fit for shorter term lodging. The new house will anchor its corner and is designed to supplement the existing Harris Cottage by providing a variety of new and necessary housing options while also creating order and a sense of arrival at the larger housing community. The house's first level includes an accessible bedroom suite, large kitchen, dining area, lounge, cupboard storage, and laundry, all while providing numerous connections to the outdoors and surrounding houses. On the second level, occupants have access to two dorm-style bedroom suites, each with four beds, plus a similar two-bedroom suite, along with study and storage spaces. In all, the house is designed to accommodate up to 12 people. The front porch offers a great place to study or gather, with views extending into the forest. In the back, there is a much-needed storage area and mudroom, with optimal structural and thermal performance in mind, the house is designed to be constructed using the innovative Simply framing system developed at Clemson and used for its 2015 Solar Decathlon competition house. The facade is comprised of wood siding, wood slats, and screening, matching the materials and look of the proposed research support building close by. This new research housing, along with the existing Harris Cottage, 
works to direct occupants towards their work at the labs and beyond while also receiving them home after each day of activity. The flexibility of the proposed house design would also allow it to be implemented at the site of the Clemson Pavilion on the edge of the Deberdu community. Upstairs bedrooms would convert to private rooms, making this an ideal arrangement for longer term researchers. The exterior of the houses would be treated in this case to harmonize with the houses found throughout Deberdu. Together, this biceps housing would form a small private community organized around the existing pavilion. Celebrating 50 years of research at the Bell Baruch Institute for Coastal Ecology and Forest Science, we look ahead to an enhanced campus that will ably foster the next 50 years of leading research while also exhibiting cutting edge, sustainable architecture and best practices for building in a sensitive landscape. So our architecture students and architecture faculty, the faculty are in the back and the students are, raise your hands guys right up here in the front. I encourage you to, to, to speak to, to all of them and, and to get more details about this plan because it's really exciting and they get a lot of really cool details that I cannot explain. <laughs> so, um, so please speak with them after the, after the program here. When the Pate Foundation was started, one of the goals was to support student experiences here at the Clemson Baruch Institute. Specifically, we do that with the Pate Partners Program, which helps fund student intern stipends. Some of you here today have supported this program in the past, and we hope you continue to do so. With your help, we can continue to grow, and more importantly, we can continue to have even greater impact on the students we teach, the community in which we live, and the beautiful natural resources that we all love and benefit so much. Details on supporting the Tate Partner Program can be found here in this brochure, uh, which is on your chair. Um, I'd like to thank the architecture program for helping us this, this, uh, this past semester develop our new plans. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out and helping us to celebrate the beginning of our 50th anniversary as the Baruch Institute of Coastal Ecology and Forest Science. And um, I'd like to invite you all to enjoy the refreshments as you walk around and interact with our faculty, our students, and our partners, and learn from the displays that, that we have for you today. Um, with that, thank you very much.